Be well, Brian Clement here, Hippocrates Health Institute. Today we have Phil as our guest, and I got to meet Phil 11 or 12 years ago. And he was a very successful businessman with an MBA, and was living on a typical Western, uh, sad lifestyle, as we call here in America. And uh, somehow you were provoked to come here. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, as they say, I'd rather be lucky than good. So I, I live 11 miles from here in, in West Palm Beach, Florida. Oh, that is, <laughs> that is our 12 o'clock and what we do at uh, 12 o'clock every day when it goes off, we hold hands and we say, compassion encircles the earth for all beings everywhere. That's and we great. stop at 12 o'clock every day and we say that and now we can, can, we, can we continue with the show? We can continue. Okay. <laughs> So I only lived 12 miles from the Institute and people told me about it and my doctor was complaining about uh, my blood work. It wasn't good. And so I decided to... And you were a young guy. How old were you at that? that I was uh, just about 40 years old at the time. Yeah. And uh, so I came here and then, I mean, the, you know, the numbers didn't lie. My, my cholesterol, everything had, had, had improved significantly. And so I felt better, I looked better. But, and I stayed with it. But the thing about that, I, I, it started to sink in, is that I realized it wasn't about me, it was really about what kind of world do we want to live in and do we want to live in a world that has, you know, killing and, and breaking up families and stealing children and killing children and stealing their milk and, you know, the whole, I got more into the, the idea of the animals and the moral, showing respect, moral yeah, showing respect for all life, not just you know, why should our moral code stop with the humans and you and I? Why, why can't we just extend that to mm -hmm. all life? Well, there's been study after study that has shown that uh, there's more rape and more murder in countries that consume the largest amount of animal fare. So it's an easy next step uh, if you're killing to so-called nourish yourself, which is completely fraudulent, it's nothing to do with reality, uh, to then rape or to displace or to have an ism against somebody else or even worse to take a life of somebody else even further to the further to the point the poor factory workers in these uh, animal factory farms who stab animals for a living oh yeah they actually as a group as a labor group have the highest rate of suicide highest rate of spousal abuse drug and alcohol abuse so that's interesting it's uh that's it, it uh, stands to reason for that. Well, I can tell you, you know, you were a guy that wasn't the typical stereotype of who comes here and makes a transformation. You had every reason in the world to live an elitist life, to pretty much keep your nose up and not care about anyone else and just live off your riches. So, deep down inside of you, what provoked that compassion, that empathy? I know you had a good family. But what was it? Well, you said it all right there. You know, I've always, I've always been a free, a, a free thinker. I've never, I've never, I'm, I'm, I'm the middle child. So I think I've always, I think I've always been a black sheep of sorts. Uh, uh, I've always done things differently, and I've never really just follow. I think one of the most important things we can do is just question the narrative. Like right now, what's going on with the, with the so-called pandemic? We're yeah. being told things. We're being told to shut our businesses, and for what reason? It was a, it was a story that we were told, and there are stories that we're told uh, as children, which forces us to adopt and to like to eat animals. Yeah. So um, it's 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 actually. But to answer your question more directly, I think once you just stay being vegan, things start to sink in. So veganism is great if you're if you're a self-centered person and you want to be sexy, yeah, exactly. and you want to, okay, but, but if you stay with it, it, other things start to sink in, which is, oh, I'm not taking part of this really demonic system. Yeah, yeah. Uh, just a system that you couldn't, no imagination, you couldn't think of a more um, demonic system of killing and, and, and stealing and the environment, the impact on the environment and what it does for our spirituality what it does, how we treat each other, because there's a small step from how we treat animals to how we end up treating each other. Right. So once you realize that you're not part of that system, and I don't say that like, oh, I'm this great vegan, you know, I'm, I'm not part of that and I'm so great. It's really, it's really not about that. It's really an invitation and uh, people start to notice. Yeah, well, 
the most important one that needs to notice is you. And you've noticed and you became a totally different man. And I'm proud of you. And Thank I've you. seen you evolve and I've seen you share and I've seen you become a participatory member of the human race. And there's too few people out there today participating in the future of humanity. Thank you, Brian. Yeah. Thank you very much. So what do you see going on in the future for you? Oh, gosh. I am, uh, I've been doing lectures uh, on the vegan lifestyle, but with everything going on, um, uh, person to person is not so much. Um, so I want to keep up my vegan advocacy. And so right now I'm building my YouTube channel uh, to create the cachet to, I have an opportunity to actually uh, be on a cable news show as, a ve as the traveling vegan. <laughs> and so that's my new aim right now. Good. Yeah. Well, yeah, I just, I'm so happy about that and the book that you've written, uh, The Traveling Vegan, Have Laptop Will Travel. And when we come back, we're going to speak a little bit about that and what inspired him to spend a year of his life in 12 cities, countries all over, giving the message of hope, healing, and happiness. Be right back. Do you want stronger immunity and powerful health? For seven decades, Hippocrates Health Institute has been teaching people how to boost their immunity and take charge of their health as a pioneer of raw and living food, plant-based nutrition, and applied lifestyle medicine. Visit us now or learn from us online to take charge of your health. Contact us at Hippocrates Health Institute at www.hippocratesinst.org or call us at 561-471-8876. Contact Hippocrates Health Institute. Welcome back. As we went to break, we talked about this exciting book that Phil wrote, Laptop Will Travel, uh, as a vegan. And he went to many cities around the world, many countries around the world over a one-year period and spread the word of sanity in the insane world. So what made you write that book? Well, actually, I wanted to inspire others that they could have a life that uh, I feel like I'm trying to live my best life. I wanted to inspire others that their life could be celebratory and purposeful. That's good. Say travel. those two words again. Celebratory and purposeful. Isn't that nice? Who out there doesn't want to celebrate life and have a purpose in life? Why most of you are sick and society and our cultures are astray today is we have no purpose. So what was the most interesting thing you learned out there traveling? Well, what they say about travel, it's the only thing you buy that makes you richer. Yeah. And for me, I've always loved travel and I joined a team, a company called Remote Year, where they organized us in teams and we, tra we spent a whole year traveling. We were in one city per month. So I was in 12 cities in 10 countries on four continents with 48 other people that were strangers on day one. Hmm. And so I wrote a book about, and I was able to run my real estate, uh, our family office was able to run my real estate company remotely. And the other people I traveled with also had remote worker jobs. Either they had their own companies, they were working remotely. But I also used the cities as a platform to spread the vegan message. And in several of the cities I gave, I actually uh, uh, linked in with the uh, local vegan groups and uh, so in some cases, I had an interpreter, like in Japan and Colombia. And uh, have you given lectures with an interpreter? Oh, many times. Yeah, yeah. It's, in, it's an interesting. It, it's you have to learn. You have to get a rhythm with that. You get a rhythm with that. Yeah. And the thing about that is I was, uh, it forced me to ditch my slides yeah. because there was, no, there was not enough time cause I, to, to do my full, what I call my signature lecture. So I was basically doing everything. Uh, it forced me to really distill the message in a way that uh, hadn't been forced to before. So it was really interesting growth. But I think the, the book ended up being successful. Um, I sold over 6,000 copies. Beautiful. It was number one in seven countries. And how do people get this that are listening to us now around the planet? This is on Amazon um, in the paper edition and also in the Kindle electronic. But it's also, it's also in audiobooks in my own voice. No kidding. Nine hours do, of do my- Do you do a deep voice or you I do, do this Phil voice? I do this, my regular <laughs> head voice uh, um, and it's nine hours and you know, they say writing a book and you've written several books, but for me, this is true that writing a book is the closest thing a man will ever come to childbirth. 
Yes. And, but, <laughs> and that was true because it took me six months to write it, six months to edit it, and to really polish it up and make it what it is. But then, um, you know, reading for nine hours with, you know, trying to, and fixing the mistakes, that's when I realized how hard it is to get up. It was, it was literally the hardest thing I ever did. But uh, people like the book. I'm very happy about it because not for me. The last thing I ever wanted to do was to write a book saying, hey, look at me and all this cool stuff I'm doing. Right. I actually wanted to write a book to inspire others through the, the joy of travel to live a, to try to live their best life is celebratory and purposeful. At Hippocrates Health Institute, we've been researching and utilizing CBD for 10 years. Over the last three years, our director, Brian Clement, worked with a nutritional scientist who formulated a high-potency CBD food powder that time releases this mind-expanding, pain-reducing, and naturally fulfilling plant. It provides a complete protein, the essential fats your body and brain require, and acts like a supercharged green drink. Your life will be enhanced by Life Give Body Mind CBD. Well, you did it, and you sent many people back here to Hippocrates from that trip, and, sure. and since yes, your parents have come here. My they parents just celebrated are vegan. With their fifty-seventh anniversary, fifty-seventh wedding anniversary, they're vegan. My my dad's eighty, my mom's seventy-six, and they they get their blood tests done by their their, their doctors are, their their one doctor is actually pretty cool on the you know pretty clued in on what's going on with vegan, yeah. but they hear the same thing from their across their range of doctors. They just say. Keep doing what you're doing, you know. They won't do it, the <laughs> yeah, doctor. They they, do it. But <laughs> so, you know, this has been something you and I have, have used. We, we traveled and we didn't get sick. Explain this. You're taking this every day because of this uh, plan-demic. The plan-demic, yeah. yeah. Scam, <laughs> scam-demic. 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 Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is Argentic 23, Argentin 23. This is uh, hydrosoil, hydrosol silver as opposed to colloidal. Yes. Which is different. It's the hydrosol, hydrosol. And this up my nose like this. And you want to make sure it drips down your throat. Mm -hmm. And basically, my, my doctor friend said, if you take this every day, he, he's been taking this every day for 10 years, never had a cold, never been sick. Yeah. The people I talked to this morning had the same experience. Basically, he says, if you take this every day, along with the li was liposomal vitamin C, exactly. um, it's pretty much, it's kind of almost impossible to get COVID-19 or something like it's that. It's true, that and vitamin D. Uh, and this is yeah. something I've been for over 30 years using on planes. And again, uh, this is the original antibiotic. Before Rockefeller took over the pharmaceutical industry and started to train allopathic doctors and put them on oil-based pharmaceutical drugs that have major, major side effects, this is what they used to use. And as a matter of fact, we've IV'd this into people's veins and seen remarkable differences with viral diseases uh, Lyme's disease, etc. And the other thing that you and I share, uh, besides cleaning up our noses from viruses, is earthing. So explain this, what you learned about it. So what I love about being vegan and Hippocrates, coming to Hippocrates, is you might think after three weeks that I'm vegan now and I'm good, or my, you know, I have <laughs> all the all knowledge. There is. That's all there <laughs> That's is. That's all there is. Yeah. But it's just, it's just a doorway, and it, it's, it, there's another doorway that beckons, and we walk through that door, and you know, veganism is really just a, essentially a joyous adventure. Yes. Just walk through one doorway to the other, and so in the store, a wonder, wonderful Matthew, who's a fantastic colleague of yours, who mm -hmm. I really enjoy uh, his information. He was at the festival, the last uh, Raw Fest. He was demoing the uh, earthing sheets, and he had the little, um, the needle measuring people's radiation, yeah. and so he measured your radiation, and it was like off the charts. And they said, now put your hand on this earthing sheet. And the radiation dropped to zero. Yeah, isn't it amazing? So I bought one for my bed. Yeah. And that night, I slept like a baby. I didn't get up once to take an old man piss. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and basically, in this book, this book called Earthing, it says, the subtitle says, the most important health discovery ever. Now, that sounds like a wild claim and a bridge too far. Yes. But if you read all of these, it's essentially anecdotal stories about people. Basically, it's an inflammation buster. Yeah. And so what I love about the Institute, it's not just the food, which obviously is the cornerstone of the program, the main pillar of the program, but there's so much more. And uh, to be grounded to the earth for eight hours a day is, uh, is a blessing. And it's, I'm telling my friends now, it's like Indian marriage, no choice. You have to get this. <laughs> you have to get this for your bed. <laughs> Well, I can tell you, you know, remember, now we have rubber sole shoes and we have 
uh, are food protected. Not long ago, our great-grandparents and great-great-grandparents were walking on the earth and we were always connected and traveled from one place to another. So it was wonderful to have you with us today, Phil. Thank we you, appreciate man. you coming Thank in. You so much. Keep up your travels and keep uh, telling people around the world the optimistic message. And that message from you is what? Live a celebratory, adventurous, and purposeful life. Congratulations. Until next time, be well. Thank you. <laughs> Good. Thank you.